Truth Unveiled here, and today we're going to be following up on our True Location series, only this time now the focus is going to be specifically on Gibeon, Sodom, and Gomorrah. Now before there was our video done on this topic where we covered it in great detail having to do with NASA and FEMA and the most recent announcement regarding them preparing for a so-called asteroid scenario. However, as we've gone over in the video before and touching up on this subject, now we're going to be getting an in-depth study on this together. And again, this will be following up on our True Location series because I understand it's been a minute since we've actually did a video on that but now we're going to continue on and one hint to know the real authentic truth about the real Sodom and Gomorrah and Gibeon specifically is to look at so-called asteroids and we're going to be talking more about that in just a moment to come now in case you're new to this subject please take a look at the true locations playlist that will be linked in the description box below again I repeat please take a look at that playlist because in that playlist there have already been videos done on subjects such as the true locations of the real Jerusalem and the real Yasharal or Israel where it really truly is today along with other places such as ancient Assyria and ancient Babylon and you can learn more about that in the playlist but as a brief recap for those who still might be doubting about this subject because I know that this is a very controversial subject, once again, we're going to be taking a look at this and reiterating this one more time if you have not already seen the documentary or even where the true temple, Hayakal, of the real Yasharal really is. First and foremost, once again, like scripture talks about, and we've already covered the verses in our documentary, if you would like those verses, please take a look at it. But what? The real Jerusalem and the real land of Yasharal today is a population of zero according to scripture because according to scripture that what it is uninhabited yahua our creator says that the land will be uninhabited until we return well when you know who the real people of scripture are and here is a hint it's not the people who are claiming to be the people of scripture then you will understand that that prophecy has not come to pass yet and that the 1948 israel is a fraud All also, when you look at the size of this Israel, you'll see that it's only the size of New Jersey. Scripturally speaking, it is impossible for that land to be the entire land and location of the scripture. Why? Because if you read Joshua chapter 15 alone, you'll see that well over a hundred cities were allotted for the tribes. A ton of cities have been allotted to Yahuda, Judah specifically, let alone the other ten tribes plus Luya as well commonly known as Levi and the reason I have this highlighted is again because according to scripture the real land and the real location of the real Jerusalem has a population of zero so somebody is lying because why does this one have a population of nearly close to a million according to the United Nations somebody's lying just like they're lying about the real Mount Zion because here they tell you that the Mount Zion is located in Jerusalem but based on actual geography and geographical facts basic geography will tell you that this is not even a mountain they even tell you that this is a hill this says that it's a broad hill Wikipedia tells you that it's a hill as well it's a hill not a mountain the fake Mount Zion is not even a mountain and it's the same thing for the one in Telerod as well because that has been pushed around too that is not a mountain and if you would like to know the real location of the real Mount Zion please take a look at our true locations documentary that's also linked in the description box below and you can also find it in the playlist as well but if you're still in doubt, well, here is another empirical source on this topic because this comes here from the AGS Library, also known as the American Geographical Society from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and this was published around the 1940s, a couple of years before the fake fraudulent land was established in 1948 and the fraudulent location. And this is an article that says a land for the Jews, and we're going to tell you why this article is so very important. 
Now what I've done is that I've enlarged it so you can see it much better. Once again, this comes from the American Geographical Society Library that's located in University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee towards the mid 1940s. And this was an article published and it says a land for the Jews. It also gives a map. And the reason this source is so important is because this is what it says. And we're briefly going to go over it. I will leave it in the description box below so that you can take a look at it and read it on your your own time and see the truth that's right in front of you. But this lets you know that this map shows a selection of 10 territories. Any one of them can be sold or assigned by the land holding powers to the Jews with the fake Jews. On any one of these or on similar territories elsewhere, the Jews can establish an independent, sovereign, democratic Jewish nation in a Jewish state of their own. Many precedents exist. And again, this was published just a few years before the fake fraudulent nation was actually established established, even though there is the Balfour Declaration that was declared in 1917, mandating these fake Jewish to have a land of their own in Palestine, I just find this source to be very interesting and suspicious indeed, because this lets you know that this resurrected Jewish nation and state, this new Judea, is by no means intended as a mere refuge or shelter for persecuted or exiled individual Jews. It is to be a politically recognized country for all those Jews who have the courage to stand up and identify themselves as members of the Jewish nation. And again, we're not going to go over all of this, but I just wanted to show you the 10 different locations where they could have established the land elsewhere besides where they have already established. So they could have picked places like this, Birobidjan. They could have picked Australia, Alaska, Canada, South America, Brazil, Cyrenica, East Central Africa, which is interesting, Southeast Africa, and then Southeast Asia. So when you take a look at the map right here, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you scroll over seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, of course, they're right here today, but what's interesting is that they don't even have this area selected at all. Why is that the case? Again, I know I'm briefly going through this, but the reason this source is so important is because these 10 different locations could have been allotted to the Jewish at one point, and this is an academic historic fact. So, for example, if the Jewish decided to make China or Russia their land and decided to settle here and then decided to name the rivers and rename different places and claim that certain Chinese rivers or Russian rivers, as it's known today, if they decided, oh, well, this is the Euphrates and this is the Tigris and, oh, this random mountain over here is now Mount Zion, would you still believe it? Because that's exactly what they did over here, naming Mount Zion after hills. That's not even a mountain. And by the way, when you do more research on this area, you'll see that it was established and founded after a Roman fort namely Fort Antonia, but we're not going to go over it too much in depth. I just wanted to show you this so that you can see and understand the bigger agenda and deceptions here. Once again, this will be linked in the description box below so that you can read it fully on your own time. But now going more into the video, please ignore the pagan title, but you'll see that Namibia itself, the nation of Namibia, is commonly known as, quote, the land that our creator made in anger. Well, isn't that interesting? Because according to his word, time and time again, we see that what? That the creator of the universe is angry with one particular nation. Why? Because this particular nation provoked our creator to wrath and anger via idolatry and when we show you where the real Gibeon is today just as we've shown in previous videos then you'll understand why all of this makes more sense Remember in our book that we talked about and that we explicated in great detail titled A Hitchhiker's Guide to Armageddon by Childress. Now we did this video a couple of months ago and when we explicated it we went over with you about what? The curse of the lost city and this will tell you more about where the real Hayakal or the real temple, the real ancient Jerusalem temple, when it says lost city it's talking about Jerusalem that is currently around the area of Botswana, Namibia and 
so-called South Africa as it's known today. Now, if you would like to learn more, you can take a look at that video where we go more in depth of it. But the reason I'm here is because when it comes to the lost city and talks about the curse, well, one group of people were cursed according to Deuteronomy 28. And again, these are based off of eyewitness accounts, based off of people who have actually been to these regions and places, have been here, have seen it for themselves, have seen it with their own two eyes, have been there, have scouted it out based on actual witnesses, not based on speculations, not based on opinions, not based on people who have never been here before. But again, based on actual facts, based on actual research, based on actual evidence. Now again, the book will be linked in the description box below for your own records. That page, what you just saw, was page 182, but now we're on page 184, and the reason why we're here is because Childress did an expedition to find the so-called lost city of the Kalahari Desert, and the Kalahari we know is what? Today's Jerusalem, but Childress also went to Namibia and found the megalithic walls of Namibia, and many of these walls, by the way, are what? Walls to the ancient Hayakal, walls to the ancient temple, and the ancient city of the real Yerushalam, or Jerusalem. The reason I'm showing you this is because pay attention to this word, how Childress did describes Namibia as being virgin. Well, who is a virgin according to Yahua? Who is a virgin? And based off eyewitness accounts, they're even describing our land as virgin too. Do you see the connection here? Why is Botswana, which by the way is literally right next to Namibia, why is it known as Africa's last Eden? Why is it known like that? And by the way, when we take a look at a 1411 map, you'll see what also is called the Garden of Eden. Where is that at? Now, once again, we covered this in our True Locations documentary. Now, this map comes from Diverga who was a Venetian cartographer, and this map was made in the 1410s, circa 1411, so this map is well over 600 years old. And the reason that this map is so important is because it shows you right here what the Garden of Eden depicted at the southernmost tip of Africa with the symbol of two concentric rings from which emerge the four rivers mentioned in Genesis chapter 2, as you can see right here, and then here are the four rivers right there but where do you see that at in southern africa and botswana which is a nation in southern africa just so happened to be known as africa's last eden wow but what happened to this map? Well, in the 1930s, the original map disappeared from Heidelberg, Germany, along with its owners. And if you do more research on this map, you'll see that the owners were a Jewish family. Why would a Jewish family want to hide this map, especially when it came about, what, 10 years before the establishment of their fake fraudulent land? Do you see what they're trying to hide and cover up? Not anymore, because everything that was in the dark is coming to to the light and the truth will be revealed to you today but now going into Sodom and Gomorrah well when you actually take a look at Strong's Concordance they actually tell you some truth about this because they tell you that Saddam is a Canaanite city now they're going to tell you that it's near the Dead Sea even though we know the truth about that 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 was just added in and inserted adding and taking away, but you're going to see why that's so important. Please keep this in mind that it's a Canaanite city, meaning that it was where in the land of Canaan around that region. Not only that, but when you take a look at Strong's for Amura, which is commonly known as Gomorrah today, they tell you that it's a city where in the Jordan Valley. Please keep this in mind as we're going to be going over this much later on in the video to come. Now again, there are a lot of empirical sources in this video, so please bear with me as we get through this. But the reason this is so important, as we've talked about and we've covered this source before in multiple of our videos when it comes to the true locations, this comes from the Dictionary of Southern African Place Names, 
Now this dictionary was published in the 1980s and it has to do with so-called South Africa and the places there that was also in part with the HSRC as you can see right here or the Human Sciences Research Council. Now if you go to page 108 of this dictionary you'll see right here Canaan because again as we just looked at from Strong's Sodom is somewhere in Canaan. It's a Canaanite city so meaning it's in the land of Canaan. Well where is the land of Canaan today? Because this source tells you that what? Also encountered as Canaan land or what? Canaan's land? And then for another witness, we also went over and talked about this right here about the Canaan local municipality that's located in one of the provinces of so-called South Africa along the Garden Route that used to be known as and named the Eden District. You see the seal right here, how that looks like the Aleph right there or the All and the Paleo-Hebrew Yaudiath tongue right there. You see it right there. Not only that, but it also just so happens that this municipality, Canna Land, also holds one of the cities, includes the town of Zor, where Zor is going to be very important in this video and helping us pinpoint the real true location of Sodom specifically. But now getting more into Sodom, Gomorrah, and Gibeon specifically, you're probably wondering, well, what does this have to do with asteroids, as it's commonly known, or even meteors, and why they are synonymous? Well, just as we've gone over in the previous video, when you understand exactly what an asteroid really is, that's going to help us pinpoint the true locations. And the first question that needs to be asked is, well, what is an asteroid? What is an asteroid? Because we've been taught in our mainstream media and all over the place and lies inherited down from generation after generation and lies inherited from the Gentiles and their ancestors, we've been taught that the Earth is a globe, that asteroids come from some other planet, and that asteroids are in outer space hurling at millions of miles per hour, and that they're millions and millions and millions of miles away. This is what we've been taught for so, so long. But the question is, is the Earth even actually a globe? And is there a more sinister agenda? Because just as we've gone over in how many videos about the alien deception, because aliens are what? They're really demons in disguise. The chariots known as the UFOs are chariots that the messengers that they drive in. And those demons, the fallen ones, have been working hand in hand with your government for how long now? For how many years? And they're trying to bring about their new world order based on lies. And the lies that they're feeding you is that asteroids come from some other planet when they do not. It's important to understand and have this basic understanding that when they say asteroids or meteors or craters, that it is a result of what scripture refers to as fire and brimstone and also hailstones, large hailstones. And as we're about to go over for Gibeon specifically, you'll see that these hailstones in scripture, the fire and brimstone, that they were not just any type of rocks, that they weighed a ton of pounds. They were very heavy. And not only that, but when you actually take a look at them, you even see the fire in them. What fire and brimstone, just like with Sodom. The reason that's so very important is because knowing that Sodom and Gomorrah got hit with so-called asteroids is going to be able to help us pinpoint the exact precise location of where the real Sodom and Gomorrah really truly remains as well as with the real Gibeon. Now as we've gone over before in our documentary we're once again going to talk about the real scriptural Gibeon because you'll see right here again pay attention to the key words when it says meteorite it's really talking about what keyword hailstones fire and brimstone according to scripture. Again, the reason that they had to do all this is because they're trying to hide your creator from you. They're trying to hide the truth from you. They don't want you to know these things, not anymore, because the truth will be revealed to you today. Because even Wikipedia tells you that Gibeon is what? A so-called meteorite when really this is what? The hailstones of scripture, fire and brimstone. They'll even tell you because they tell you that it's a solid piece of debris, but what 
what they like to tell you is that oh it came from some other planet as it says right here when we know the truth about that now and that what they're trying to hide the truth about the scripture and the authenticity and promote atheism not any more but right here as it goes on to say it says between 1911 and 1913 33 fragments of the so-called meteorite was collected in the vicinity of Gibeon and brought to the capital Windhoek they weighed between 195 and 506 kilograms and were first stored then displayed at Zoo Park as a single heap why is that so important because this is once again letting you know that these rocks are are very heavy these are not just some ordinary rocks so obviously this has to do with what our creator Yahoo is sending them down if they weighed up to what well over 1100 pounds and when we go over our other source as we went over in the previous video before because this is a follow-up you'll see it as well for your own two eyes and have another source to really go off of and where were these hailstones found? They were found where? In Gibeon, Namibia, as you can see, which is still a village to this day, as we've gone over in the documentary, in where? Southern Namibia, in the Gibeon constituency. Once again, truth that is right in front of us. And for a scriptural context so that we have another witness to establish this matter, we're going to be taking a look and reading together Yahusha or Joshua chapter 10, a few verses from that chapter. Now in context, this chapter has to do with Yasharal capturing the land and claiming and seizing the land of Yasharal. And you'll see exactly what parts that they were taking. But now we're going to be reading Yahusha or the book of Joshua chapter 10, verses 10 through 12, where it says, and Yahuwah threw them into confusion before Yasharal, and they struck them with the great slaughtering at Gibeon, and pursued them along the way that goes to Bayath Kurun, and struck them as far as Azekah and Makadah. And it came to be, as they fled before Yasharal and were on the descent of Bayath Kurun, that Yahuwah threw down large hailstones from the Shamayim or heavens on them as far as Azakah or Gaza and they died. There were more who died from the hailstones than those whom the sons of Yasharal had killed with the sword. Then Yahusha spoke to Yahuwah in the day when Yahuwah gave the Amorites over to the children of Yasharal and he said before the eyes of Yasharal, Son, stand still over Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ayalun or the valley of Ajalun. Well, where was this Gibeon potentially located? We've also gone over ancient maps that also show you the exact same thing where Gibeon is really truly located. Now from the documentary when we showed you the ancient maps of Jerusalem and we documented and pinpointed all 17 of them that all show Jerusalem in the same vicinity and in the same location in southeastern Namibia as it's commonly known today. Well on ancient maps here is one from George Bacon that was done in 1900 and you see Gibeon right here and again the region is in southern Namibia as you saw on the map earlier there's Gibeon and there's Jerusalem right here near Warmbad. Then you also have Bethany right here and Beersheba as well. Scriptural Bethany and scriptural Beersheba. We also have this witness too from Second Chronicles chapter 1 verse 13 where it says, So Shaluma or Solomon came from the high place that was at Gibeon Gabaun from before the tent of meeting to Yerushalam or Jerusalem and he reigned over Yasharal. So he went from Gibeon and to Jerusalem. Again, in that same map from 1900, from Gibeon to Jerusalem. And again, just because it's a dot right here, back then it was much, much, much bigger than what they show you on maps today. But that's so very important to also note. And also pay careful attention to the timing as we've gone over in the True Locations video. A lot of those maps that show Jerusalem in this location, along with other scriptural regions such as Gibeon, Beersheba, Bethany, and the list goes on. What you'll find out is that this 
was majority done from the 1850s all the way up until the early 1910s. Why is that so important? Is because that was right before the time where they started instituting different land acts in Southern Africa, which was the precursor to apartheid. Why was apartheid so important? As we've covered in the documentary, it was during apartheid. And by the way, apartheid began the exact same year that the fraudulent fake land was established, both in 1948. Apartheid was done with sole purposes of bringing Europeans to these scriptural regions in so-called South Africa, in Namibia as well, in order to hide the locations, conceal the evidence, steal artifacts, and bring them to that fake Jerusalem and then pass off the fake Jerusalem as the real one with stolen artifacts and disallow anyone who was not European to get into those places. That's exactly what they did along with burning maps and all of the other atrocious things that was done during colonization. Now we're not going to focus too much on that in this video specifically and the reason is because we're still keeping our focus on Gibeon, Sodom, and Gomorrah specifically. And like we've talked about before, here was a study that was done on the Gibeon what they call iron meteorites. Again, hailstones, fire, and brimstone. That's what it was a result of. Whenever Yahuwah had to get rid of a town or destroy a specific location such as Sodom and Gomorrah, Yahuwah did so with so so-called asteroids that weighed a ton and not only that but as we know according to prophecy it's going to come back to America that's why NASA and FEMA are fervently getting ready because they already know that it's going to be judgment on America but they do not want the sleeping public to know not anymore but here is a four-page report that was done on the discovery history and study of these rocks these hailstones Remember how we talked about this landmark in one of the videos before, the Mukarab or the Finger of All, it, which was a landmark that was given to the 178 kilograms Mukarab mass that was found within sight of the rock formation. Now the picture here was taken several days before this rock collapsed as of December 4th, 1988, shortly before Namibia became a country in 1989. But this rock, as you can see here, weighed 178 kilograms or nearly 400 pounds. But notice how there's also this. There's also the Lion River. Oh, wow. Just like what? The Lion of Yauda, the Lion of Judah. Wow. With the Lion River that's in so-called South Africa as well. But like we've gone over before, here we're going to get a better idea of exactly how much these rocks actually weighed because they weighed a ton of pounds, literally, and could not just be picked up with just your finger. And so here we are on page two of this document. Now again, it's going to be linked in the description box below. It's four pages long that talk more about the real scriptural Gibeon. Now this is research that was done by Dr. Paul Range. And when we scroll down, it says, in 1911, the chief geologist of the colonial administration in Deutsche Südwest Afrika, Dr. Paul Range, was advised by the governor to survey the fine locations and to purchase all remaining meteorites of the Mukarab area, aka the large hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Range admits that this was a, quote, interesting enough order, and so he frequently visited Amalia. Which is interesting because it has the Ya right there, Amal Ya, Goamus, Kamuhar, and other farms in the Gibeon area between 1911 and 1913. And again, this is a very important time frame because as we noted on our True Locations video, the last map found so far that showed Jerusalem in southern Namibia was in 1912. And then in 1913, that's when the government of so-called South Africa started passing draconian laws when it came to Native Land Acts and banning people from certain places in that region. Then it says in 1913, he published the results of his survey in the article Meteoriten aus Deutsch Südwest Afrika in volume 26 in a periodical. Then it goes on to say before 1911, apart from the four masses, have already been known to Brazina and Cohen, so some other researchers, several additional specimens have been exported to Germany via the colonial company Hesselbach. 
and really I should say so-called because these were not expeditions and they were not really researchers, but we know they had an intent and purpose to really go there to hide and conceal the evidence of the true scripture locations. But then it goes on to say that at least three specimens went to the Mineralogical Museum of the Hamburg University. The two smaller specimens were cut into sections and used for trades with various museums worldwide, among them again the Smithsonian like we went over. Why do they need to get their claws on this because the biggest specimen of 420 kilograms still resides in the Hamburg collection today and like we said 400 kilograms that's well over 900 pounds so again this lets you know that these rocks were well over 900 pounds and we also know according to context in scripture that some of those nations that Yasharal went up against were giants so in order for Yahuwah to take down those giants he had to do what? Throw down large hailstones that were that size that were at least 900 pounds. Now, if you go on on page two, you'll see that it says Ranger's research from 1911 to 1913 brought to light 51 of these masses. And again, they're going to call them meteors, including those found before his survey. The total weight of them was what? 15,396 kilograms or what? Close to 34,000 pounds. Let me repeat that. 34,000 pounds worth of rocks found within the same exact region of southern Namibia. Why do you think that's the case? And again, connecting this historically with scripture, you start to see how it all adds up. The 37 masses piled up and later caged in the public garden in Windhoek originate from Ranges Field Collection. After several donations to four museums and prominent collectors, including a 650 kilogram mass, which, by the way, is well over 1,400 pounds, went to South Africa, so-called, and 33 masses were left. And of these, 28 are on public display today in Post Street Mall in Windhoek. As we've gone over in our video before, where it tells you what the Gibeon meteorites, as it's commonly known, aka the scriptural hailstones that's on display today, so you can actually see them today in Windhoek, Namibia, right here. And once again, all of the Kalahari Desert is a very important region. Why? Because it contains the real Jerusalem, all of this right here, and if not beyond that. But you'll see that it's located today as what's commonly known as Botswana, Namibia, and so-called South Africa, with the town pinpointed right here on ancient maps. And then the Gibeon is located in this region in southern Namibia, not too far. And as we noted previously, all of Namibia is what? The land of Yauda or Judah as it's commonly known today. Now we didn't go over this in the last video, but we will in this one because this will show you right here an actual map of where these different hailstones were found. And as you can see, here's Gibeon right here. And where is it in southern Namibia, the real scriptural Gibeon? So you'll see that a bulk of these rocks when they went on these so-called expeditions that they were found around the exact same region in southern Namibia. But what's also very interesting and suspicious indeed is that when you take a look at this map, and if you take a closer look, you'll see that the town that's also known as Beersheba, the real scriptural Beersheba, there were a few found over there along with scriptural Bethany too. So you see that if it impacted this region, that the rocks might have even gone as far as Bethany, even more south, and then as far down here too. And then this region is important as well as we've gone over in our true locations when it comes to the temple video or Hayakal, the college. Kalahari Gems Bach National Park. And if you keep going southward, you'll get to the town of Jerusalem that was pointed on the map in these ancient maps. Now you'll see that this map comes from Texas University and is in public domain. And you can take a look at it. The map itself is coordinated by numbers. And again, notice how this region is very mountainous. But not only that, you'll see that each rock was found. You'll see where it was found and how much it weighed. And once again, some of the rocks that were found, they weigh well into the hundreds of pounds, well into the hundreds of kilograms. So you see that these rocks were very big and that they weighed a ton and that they're all in southern Namibia along with the real scriptural Gibeon. 
as well as Bethany and what? The Lion River that's located here also. So based on archaeology, history, geography, and scripture, and academic sources to back all this up, now how can we find the real Sodom and Gomorrah location? Well, again, the way that we can find it is with so-called impact craters that was a result of the real scriptural hailstones fire and brimstone that's listed for Sodom and Gomorrah listed in Brashith or Genesis chapter 19 verse 24. So again, one of these craters will help us pinpoint the exact location of the real Sodom and Gomorrah. And as we saw earlier from that source about Sodom being in Canaan, the land of Canaan, well, we already used how many witnesses to let us know that the real land of Canaan is located in southern Africa, not where they want us to believe. So that means that Sodom and Gomorrah has to be located in one of the so-called impact craters in southern Africa. The question, though, is which one? Well, let's find out because as we've already gone over, we touched up on confirmed impact craters as they're commonly known. And then we looked at this map right here that shows you the confirmed impact craters as they're commonly known, aka the fire and brimstone, the hailstones that came down from the Shamayim and impacted these places. Now again, some people are still going to sit there and say, oh, but how do you know it's not any of these other places? Or, oh, how do you know it's not in America? Or, how do you know it's not here? Or, how do you know it's not there? Because again, we're letting history and scripture speak for itself along with these ancient maps as well. We have tons of witnesses to back this up. But what you'll see is that in Southern Africa specifically, you see what? One, two, three, four, five, six, at least seven of them in this region. So this lets us know that one of them has to be the pinpointed location of the real Sodom and Gomorrah. And so the question now becomes, which one? But what I'm showing you now is the Earth Impact Database world map. And the reason this map is so important is because it will show you just the impact that the so-called asteroid would have had, the hailstones would have had. And you will see that Vrita Fort right here, as we've gone over before in so-called South Africa, would have affected and impacted much of Southern Africa. And really, folks, all of this was the land of Yasharal back then from Kenya on downwards was the land of Yasharal is the land of Yasharal was the allotted portion that was given to Yasharal as an inheritance the land of Canaan along with Morocco wing too now we've gone over these before and we'll once again touch up on them again but I just want you to see this map so you can see how much of an impact it really had so when it shows a little bitty dot well that little bitty dot really expands all the way to what basically half the continent for some of them. Now there are five of these that we're going to go over. Now again, part of the lies that they also tell you is that, oh, they're millions of years old and oh, they're so old that they're estimated to be over two billion years old when really that is a lie. They're only a few thousands of years old and we know that they're what? Of the hailstones that scripture talks about, the fire and the brimstone because that's how it looks when they're hurtling out from the Shamayim or from the heavens about to impact the earth like they did of old in scriptural times and they're going to do so again real soon as part of the judgment for the world but anyway we're going to go over five of them and you're going to see exactly which one could have been the one that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and again, based on multiple witnesses, but the reason this one is so important is because this one says Rita Fort Crater. It says it's the largest verified what they call impact crater on Earth that's more than 300 kilometers or 190 miles across when it was formed, so close to 200 miles. Now, if you actually take a look at the map, you'll see right here in so-called Southern Africa that it's where? In this region right here. And it's interesting that it's in this particular region because it's not too far from the scriptural Jerusalem that was been pointed on the map in Southern Namibia. It's also very interesting and suspicious indeed how it's said to be one of the biggest to ever strike Earth. And why that's so important is because we know that also Jerusalem was destroyed as well. Well, could it have been destroyed? destroyed by this too.
Once again, look at words and etymology because words are very important. It says Rita for it. Well, when you look at the Dutch, you'll see that Rita means what? It means peaceful. And then, of course, the word for it. Well, wasn't Jerusalem called this at one point in one of the ancient maps? Now, from the documentary itself, it just so happens that the earliest map found so far of Jerusalem that was pinpointed on the actual map was this one, and it shows Jerusalem, but it also shows another word. This map was done all the way back in 1854 by cartographers Black Adam and Charles in Sydney Hall, and what you'll see is that Jerusalem is located right here, and this again is in southern Namibia, right near the border between Namibia and so-called South Africa, but not only does it show Jerusalem, it shows Riedeberg. Riedeberg. Why is that so important? Because again, Rida means peaceful, Berg means mountain, peaceful mountain, and the Yaudith Hebrew language, we know that what? Jerusalem, Yarushalum means what? Peaceful foundation or foundation of peace. Is that a surprise or a coincidence? And then with the Rita Fort, what is that telling you? And again, although the ancient maps, they show Jerusalem to be this one little dot, don't think that it's that one little dot that's located here in southeastern Namibia, but it was much bigger and encompassed a whole big ginormous region back then. So that's one of them. And then there's this one. There's the Roterkam one, which they claim is a meteorite crater. Of course, we know what that is, the hailstones fire and brimstone. Now this is located within the Namibian section of the Namib Desert, approximately 80 kilometers or 50 miles north of Aranjamun. And as you can see right here, learn more about it. It's located in the southwestern corner of Namibia as it's commonly known today. Then there's also this one, which is the Moroccan Crater. Now, this is a very interesting one. Why? Because it's buried in the Kalahari Desert. And we already told you about the Kalahari Desert, how basically all of this desert is the real Jerusalem, but how it's also in close proximity to the border of Botswana. Now, we've already gone over that in a video before. We don't have time to cover it in this one, but you'll see that what? This area, along with the Kalahari Jemsbok National Park that's located in that area, all of this area contains what? The lost city of the Kalahari, also known as the Jerusalem Hayakal or the Jerusalem Temple. And again, this is based on eyewitness accounts and artifacts based on people who have actually been to these regions, who've actually uncovered the archaeology and the big ginormous rocks and in their studies and findings, and you can also find it from Childress findings that's located in the description box, that these rocks were what? They were man-made made rocks. They were not rocks that were based off of geological features, but they were rocks that were built and constructed by our ancestors a long time ago. Because as we also went over in those sources, that they will even tell you that the San people, who are the natives there right now, they did not build and construct those things. But again, we've already covered that in our video with the True Location Temple. If you have not seen it, please see it. It's in the description box located with the True Locations playlist. But then there's also this crater, as it's commonly known, or Hailstone fire and brimstone. Now this is a very important one also based on location because it's located in Botswana. But when you take a careful and close look at this, you'll see that it's located in a very particular region. And the region that it's near is right here, Solomon's Wall. And again, if you take a look at the eyewitness accounts of Childress from the book that was linked in the description box, and also as we talked about in our documentary regarding the temple, you'll see that this rock and these walls were monolithic walls. They were hundreds of feet tall. These were not just some small little things. No, it was monolithic, just like it was a monolithic place back then. It was huge and it was constructed by human hands. 
But why am I showing you this is because Solomon's wall, why do you think it's called that Solomon's wall? The wall of Solomon. Could this have been the wall of the Hayakal or the wall of the temple that Solomon built in the real Jerusalem in this region? Huh, it's looking like it because you'll see that it's located around the border between Botswana, Zimbabwe, and so-called South Africa. That's not too far from that so-called crater that we just looked at within the same region along the border. So again, if you pinpoint it, you'll see that they're not too far away. They are very close in proximity. So you have the crater right here, as it's commonly known, and then you have the Thule block, which is also known as what? Solomon's Wall. And if you take a look at it on Wikipedia, you'll see that what? They're not too far away. Here's Botswana. Here's the eastern side of Botswana where Solomon's Wall is. And then there's also right here, you see the crater, as it's commonly known, the large hailstones so-called asteroids that's not too far from Solomon's wall. So could it have been that when it came time for the destruction of Yasharal as a nation that the so-called asteroids or the large hailstones, fire and brimstone, that they rained down and also destroyed part of the Hayakal or part of the temple of Jerusalem with the remnants already here with the remnants left over in this region? Here is a picture of Solomon's wall just so that you can see it and once again if you would like to learn more about the Jerusalem Haya call the temple and where it really is and for more visuals and for more pictures please take a look at our video that was done on this it's nearly two hours long and again you can find it in the true locations playlist. Now, before we go over this last so-called crater, let's review. We know that an asteroid, as it's commonly known, is really the hailstones, the fire, and the brimstone that scripture is speaking about. And we know that in order to pinpoint certain scriptural locations, we can do so using the impact that has been left from these rocks long ago of old. That's how we will be able to find certain scriptural locations. We've already been able to do so with Gibeon and now also for Sodom and Gomorrah because here is another one. Now this one is very important and has to do with Sodom and Gomorrah and could this be the one that impacted Sodom and Gomorrah especially when you look at both towns that are actually named and known as Sodom and Gomorrah within this region along with what the pillar of salt what am I talking about because here is this one that's known as the Swang, and again, forgive me if I'm butchering the pronunciation, but what this one will tell you is that it's situated 40 kilometers to the northwest of the town known as Shwani, or commonly known as Pretoria today. Now pay careful attention to this next part because this is going to let you know that it's what? That it means place of salt in Swana and that it was originally formerly known in English as the Pretoria Salt Pan or in Afrikaans, Salt Punk Reiter. And again, forgive me if I'm butchering the pronunciation, but again, they even tell you that it was stony, what? Fire and brimstone. You see that? Why is this so important? Because when we look at the story of Lot and Lot's wife, what was she turned into? Oh, that's right, a pillar of salt. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. Not only that, but it shows you its impact where? In northern South Africa. But that's not the only place that's located in this region because if you take a look from the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, you'll actually found a place that's known as what? Sodom, South Africa. And when you zoom out, where is this place located? Wow, it just so happens to be located in the exact same place of that so-called crater that we just looked at. You see how they're located exactly within close proximity and that it's also known as what? The place of salt what is that telling you and let's not forget about Gomorrah because is Gomorrah nearby well it just so happens that upon further research if you actually take a look at one of the cities in so-called South Africa today commonly known as Alexandra and Gauteng this will tell you that it's in the Gauteng province of South Africa and that it forms part of the city Johannesburg
But why is it that this city is commonly known as Gomorrah among local residents? And here's a map of it. When you take a map of it in South Africa, you'll see that it's what? Within the same region of that crater that we just looked at, it's in the exact same region. And if you look at it here, the same region, just like what we looked at with Sodom, what? Sodom, Gomorrah, that was what? In the same area impacted by the crater or what? Fire and brim stone and not only that but according to other sources it's all within what the Canaanite land because it was the Canaanite city so what the land of Canaan now what we're going to do is pinpoint these exact locations so that you can see how close in proximity they really are. So now here we are at that same source from the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency that shows Sodom in so-called South Africa. What you'll see right here is that it's located in the northern part right here. Now if you click directions, it'll take you to Google Maps and it'll give you the directions based off of the coordinates. Now, upon a simple Google search, I could not find Sodom, South Africa that was listed on Google Maps. So the only way to be able to list it is via coordinates right here or from this source right here. So if you click on directions, what you will get is this source right here. Now again, here is that source. So here is Sodom as it's commonly known according to the source that we just looked at. And so you see Sodom right here and then the town known as Alexandra. Now, of course, it's commonly known as Gomorrah among local residents. So you have what? Sodom and Gomorrah. And please also note and pay attention how they're very close to one another. They're in close proximity, only a four hour drive according to this. So we see how close they really were. And again, when the impact was made with the so-called meteor, you'll see that it would have been all over, that it would have engulfed this entire region as we just noted before. And as we noted with some of the sizes when it came to the rocks in Gibeon and how much they really weighed. Here is a map that shows all three of them. So if you take a look from the coordinates that we just supplied for Sodom, you get this location right here at the northern part of so-called South Africa. And then you have Alexandra as we just went over how that's known as Gomorrah among local residents. Why is that the case? What do they know? Not only that, but you see right here this other source that Swang Meteorite Crater Reserve as it's commonly known. This is supposed to be the place where the actual hailstone hit this region and you'll see that it's located right in between them located right in between so-called Sodom and so-called Gomorrah right here near Pretoria all within the same exact proximity the same region is that a surprise or a coincidence I don't think so but now that we have a better idea on the locations, now it's time to actually learn more about the so-called crater because this is the one that could have made impact with ancient Sodom and Gomorrah back then. Now this will let you know from the National Research Foundation, from the Heart of Beast Hulk Radio Astronomy Observatory, this lets you know more info. We're not going to go over all of it, but what I will do is link it in the description box below so that you can read more about it on your own time. And it says, is here 40 kilometers north of Pretoria lies a ring of hills a kilometer in diameter and 100 meters high these hills are the walls of an impact crater as it's commonly known left by a so-called asteroid aka fire and brimstone hailstones which hit there of course they're gonna say 200,000 years ago but really was it barely 3,000 or 4,000 years ago that what it's the similar in size to the well-known so-called Behringer one in Arizona and that it it was what originally about twice as high as they are today. Now again, it's called Swang in Setswana, which is a local language of the area, or Saltpan in Afrikaans. Both names mean salt pan, and it derives from what? The lake of salty water that fills the center. Let me repeat that. Lake of salty water that fills the center. So again, what are our witnesses to conclude that this could be the one that hit Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, the first one is that what? All of the town names that are nearby Sodom and Gomorrah in this 
region. Not only that, but also we have another witness of what? Fire and brimstone. So the fact that it's a so-called crater, the fire and brimstone, that's our second witness. And this is our third one. How what? It makes the lake of salty water because we all know the story of Lot and Lot's wife that Lot was instructed to leave the town. But what? Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt, salty water. So there is our three witnesses, two or more witnesses to establish this matter. Here are some pictures as you can see today. This shows you how it looks today. Again, are you actually looking at the region that was once upon a time known as Sodom and Gomorrah in this proximity and vicinity? Because it also says the pan at the bottom has been mined for salt for hundreds of years. So again, she was turned into what? A pillar of salt. Could this be once again another witness that's right in front of you? Again, there are no coincidences whatsoever. Now we're not going to go over all of this, but like I said, I will link it in the description box below so that you can see it on your own time. But it says how to get there, who made it, how big was it, which is also very important. But what I wanted to turn your attention to was this actually. How big was was the object because it says here from the amount of energy released we can calculate that the mass of the object must have been about 300,000 tons and according to this source they tell you how they mathematically get this number but what's important to understand 300,000 tons that's what 600 million pounds let me repeat that 600 million pounds that is about the same weight as what the Empire State Building. So just imagine right now, just picture this right now. Imagine the Empire State Building being lifted up and being dropped over New York City. You can only imagine what type of impact that would make. But that's how big that this rock was, the what fire and brimstone, the hailstone, that's how big it was. Again, just imagine the Empire State Building toppling, imagine it turned sideways and falling and hovering over New York City or anywhere. You can only imagine how big it is, how much weight it is. Well, it was just like this back then. Here is a fourth witness that we actually have of this matter right here is Zor because according to the story from Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah when they fled they went into the mountains and what happened Lot had to flee from Sodom to this town in order to settle there to get away from Sodom and Gomorrah and the destruction that took place there. Now this is interesting because remember we told you to pay careful attention and keep Zor in mind earlier ago in the video. Well, it just so happens that there is a town called Zor in so-called South Africa in the Eden, the Garden Root District in this area. And that what it's mentioned in scripture in Brasheth or Genesis chapter 14 verses 2 through 8. You can also find this town in that dictionary we looked up earlier from the Dictionary of Southern African Place Names according to the Human Science Research Council from page 486. Again, we looked at it when it came to Canaan or the land of Canaan, but this is also in there. It says the name at first meant insignificance, but when Lot fled thither from Sodom, it acquired the meaning of haven. And you'll see right here, here's a map of it, and here's a map of so-called South Africa. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah is located in this region, so could it be possible that Lot had to flee all the way from here to here in this area to escape the destruction that was taking place over here? And we know that destruction took place over there because a 300,000 ton rock impacted this area. But in case you need to see it in the actual dictionary, here it is from the Dictionary of Southern African Place Names on page 486 right here. And you'll see Zor right there. And it says the name at first meant insignificance, but when Lot fled thither from Sodom, it acquired the meaning of refuge, haven. Not only that, but according to scripture, he had to flee into the mountains. Could it be possible that he fled into these mountains that just so happens to be nearby this region? 
Here, once again, is a map. Now, again, remember that Sodom and Gomorrah located on the ancient map with that so-called asteroid that impacted or what fire and brimstone, that 300,000 ton rock impacted this area, this region of northern so-called South Africa. Well, it just so happens that there is a string of mountains nearby and the mountains is known as the Drakensberg. So could it be possible that Lot and his family that they had to leave and in order to escape the ensuing destruction that they had to flee to these mountains and then go this way towards Zor which is located this way could that be a possibility very interesting and suspicious indeed is all of this or a surprise or a coincidence or are your eyes open and fully awakened to the truth because the truth will make you free and the truth is being revealed to you today so for a brief review, we now know that Sodom is actually located in northern so-called South Africa, according to the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency right here. And here is a pinpointed location that's right here. And then from there, we also found out, according to this, that Alexandra Gauting right here is actually known as Gomorrah to some of the local residents and is not that far from Sodom as you can see right here on a map that's located very close to Pretoria and Johannesburg and then we also took a look at the Swain crater as it's commonly known and we've proven with scripture that craters is what the fire and the brimstone that affected Sodom and Gomorrah back then it would have looked like a so-called asteroid and not only that but not only is this all within the same close proximity in the same region but it just so happens to mean place of salt and the Tswana language and not only that but we know that Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt taking a look at the map today and pinpointing all three locations as we've done before these coordinates are the coordinates for Sodom that's located right here and then you have the actual crater reserve as it's commonly known located right here not too far from Alexandra aka Gomorrah according to the residents again everything in close proximity and by the way the fire and brimstone that took place here was what it was 300,000 tons of according to one source, or well over 600 million pounds, about the same size as the Empire State Building. But now we have one more witness because remember we told you to keep this in mind how Sodom is a what Canaanite city and we already showed you and shared with you how what the land of Canaan according to dictionaries in different places and ancient maps is actually in southern Africa so we already have that established as a witness but what about Gomorrah because this lets you know that this is a city within the Jordan Valley the Jordan Valley well do you see Jordan on ancient maps that's located in so-called South Africa and even a map of the Jordan River in so-called South Africa today? Well, let's see, because this map was featured in the documentary, and as you can see right here, there are a ton of scriptural locations in this map alone from 1905 in so-called South Africa, as you can see right here. You even see places like Hebron mentioned, Bethany over there, but you see Jericho right here, and then you also see Jordan over here near Bethal, commonly known as Bethel, and isn't it very interesting and suspicious indeed how you see Jordan over here how you see it near Pretoria and Johannesburg while the same region in the same area that what of Sodom Gomorrah and of the Swain crater so-called all within close proximity all within the same region very interesting and suspicious indeed is any of this a surprise or a coincidence now in the documentary we also covered the importance of what of pools and fountains just like in scripture with what the pool of Bethesda and we also even share with you ancient maps of Bethesda and the pools that are nearby within the same region nearby Jerusalem as well in southeastern Namibia as it's commonly known today but this map from 1864 shows you what fountains and pools a scriptural match just like lions along with jackals because we know according to the word of our father that what 
that the real scriptural land would be inhabited by jackals. And then you see Jordan right here, which is more towards the west of so-called South Africa. Wow, very interesting and suspicious indeed. We see another map that shows Jordan as well. But that's not the only thing that these maps are showing because now we're going to show you the Jordan River that's pinpointed in so-called South Africa today. But it's very interesting how it's hidden and the only way you're able to see it is if you really zoom in because Google Maps will not show it quite freely. But it's interesting because now I'm showing you this right here and there's a reason that I'm showing you this wildlife reserve. You're going to find out it's right in the border between Lesotho and so-called South Africa today. Now, now again, here is that crater reserve, which is what the fire and the brimstone, the place of salt. And by the way, it was a stony one. So what brimstone, place of salt, Lot's wife, a pillar of salt around the same areas of the Sodom region and Gomorrah that's located not too far, aka Alexandra. But what happens when I zoom in on this region? We're going to do this together just so you can see as I continue to zoom in and in and in. This is what you're going to find. Again, you have to keep doing it. And as we keep doing it, you're going to see it come up. But you have to keep zooming and keep zooming. And this is what you see. You see the Jordan River right here within this area. Is that a surprise or a coincidence? Could this be the scriptural Jordan River? Could this be where the events of scripture took place, where the Messiah was actually immersed or commonly known as baptism? Is this where it could have happened within this region, within so-called South Africa? Africa and definitely not that fake Jordan that they're selling as a country, huh? And not that fake Jordan River either. But if you keep scrolling, and if we keep scrolling here, you'll see the what? Jordan River, Jordan River. And if you keep scrolling, it keeps showing Jordan River, Jordan River. And if you keep going, Jordan River, the river keeps going and keeps going. But the better question is, why is this not showing up on actual Google Maps? Because if you zoom out, you have to zoom all the way in before it pops up and shows anything that's near this wildlife reserve. And once again, if you zoom in, you'll be able to see it once more right here. And if you keep going you'll be able to see exactly where it goes and it still keeps going I'm just gonna keep doing this until it changes into another name but I just found that very interesting and suspicious indeed to note so again, could this really be the true location of the leftover remnants of Sodom and Gomorrah? Could this really be ancient Sodom and Gomorrah that you're currently looking at this area, this region of this so-called crater of what? Fire and brimstone and the effects of it. Could this be the leftovers of it? Is all of this a surprise or a coincidence? You decide and continue to seek Yahua and his true son Yahusha for even more truth. This is Truth Unveiled here saying as always, Shalom.